So what I would like you guys to do, baby, on somewhere on that index card that you just filled out, if you would think about how creative you think you are. So a zero is going to be there. You could not be less creative. Like it's you are at the very bottom. Ten is you won the Olympics at creativity. So just write that number down. So think about how how creative you think that you are. Zero, bottom, terrible, n none, lack of creativity. And a ten would be a plus gold medal, Olympics winner of creativity. So hold on to that number for a couple minutes. And um, what I teach is research methods, which I know is every student, they can't, they can't wait to get to research methods. The other class I teach is public speaking. So I'm winning at classes that students love to be involved in. <laughs> so they get to my class with a little apprehension and or they think they're going to be bored. And so I have to kind of overcome those initial feelings and uh, assumptions about class. And I have taught research methods for honors college, so with students from all over the place, um, emerging scholars, students all over the place. And this semester I'm teaching uh, research methods for comm studies majors. So in this course they all are in the College of Communication and Information Sciences. All right, so what we like to talk about, or what I'd like to talk about is, one, is accessibility of research. I think students sometimes don't realize what access they have given our resources at the University of Alabama. And a lot of them still, when they read research art articles, they think this, I don't understand it. And we have to teach that this is academic writing, and it's tough. It's hard to understand. For students, it's really hard for people out, out there to understand. So one of the things that I like to talk about is how accessible are you as a consumer of research making, like figuring out what do I have access to, but then as a communicator of research, how are you disseminating it? What are the options for dissemination of research? And is that accessible? I also like to use reflection as research. So I have students, and I got this idea from Quap, but I have students, I ask them, what did you learn this week? Who did you learn it from? Why was it important? At the end of the semester, I have them look over those reflections. I also ask them, do you think you're smart? And I have a lot of students who say no. And I'm like, but you're in, like you got to college. Does that not make you smart? And so I see a lot of like this academic, lack of academic confidence. And so over the course of the semester, as they reread their reflections, I have them think about how that's changed. I also ask them, if you were gonna tell a prospective student, what's it like here? What would you say within the university and within your major? And so at the end, they can see how that changes. Is it terrible one week because it's midterm week? Is it great because it's spring break? And they can see, does that change? And as they're doing that, they're, they're researching their own experience. Um, and then I also have them practice research methods. So I have them interview people and transcribe their interviews and attempt to code them. So in their projects, they're getting practice. And then they have to communicate the research that they're doing. So I took this from the student outcomes or objectives from the syllabus. And what are the most important are to critically read, understand, and evaluate academic research and develop research literacy, analyze, synthesize, and present research in accessible language for academic and lay audience formats, and then generate and contribute to the field of communication through undergraduate research. So what I want you to do is I want you to write down on that piece of paper five words or phrases that describe what you do. So we were asked, if you have a class and you have all these learners, what do you want them to walk away with? And that was what one of the things that we were challenged to think about. And so 
I looked back at, at PowerPoints, and I thought, okay, human dimensions. I want you to learn about how you learn as a student. And I want you to think about how other people learn. So when we're talking about dissemination of research and how to communicate research, think about how you best receive it, but think about everyone else and what their options could be about how to learn about research. Um, caring, again, students are coming in, a lot of them, to research methods, and they're like, I don't care. I'm not going to do research. I'm like, did you decide what to put on this morning? Yes, ah, research. You are going to do research. So I want them to develop some care about research methods and to value the research that they do and that others are doing. Application skills, of course, are important. And then I think that connecting people is important. Connecting an individual to their environment is important. And then, of course, problem solving skills development is huge. So I want them to take or learn how to take multiple sources figure out how they connect together. I want them to create multiple things, figure out how they go together, and how that helps to solve a problem. Um, communicating that information to multiple audiences with purpose. Reflections on learning, and then assessment of those reflections. And then hopefully um, presenting what they do at the Undergraduate Research and Creative Activity Conference. So I piloted this last semester with the Honors College students that I had, and I'll show you a couple of outcomes. So what I had them do is I had them identify some faculty member they thought were, was doing cool research. And I had them go learn about that research, interview the faculty member, interview students who were working with that faculty member. They had to write a popular press style article. They had to learn about finding pictures and sourcing them or citing them correctly. So this one, uh, always important, um, how healthy romantic relationships overcome conflict and why some don't. So that was the popular press article that this student wrote. She also depicted that really well. And then putting it all together, sorry the spacing is a little bit uh, not great. Um, I went from the big poster to this, this size PowerPoint slide. She also did a systematic lit review and created a table based on the 20 sources that she read, articles that she read over the semester. And the students, when they see that, they see that like pages long table they create, and they've read systematic lit reviews and they see them in journals, they're like, oh, oh, I did that. That's a lot of work and that's cool. And so it's incorporating interviews and journal articles and popular press articles, thinking about the method, what did they do to create this? They had to write an artist statement, which challenged them to think about why did I draw this this way? Why did I pick this picture from the internet? What colors am I using? Am I having breaks in my lines or not? Here is one other one. Um, so one of my students was a nursing student um, your nurse, and this actually was on Twitter just the other day, um, an article about this faculty member's research. Your nurse may be a former alcoholic or drug addict. This is her picture. And then putting it all together, incorporating each component. Oh, I do have a couple other examples. Another nursing student, this one was about health literacy, delinquency and mental health in the juvenile justice system, and finally, um, psychopaths. I also try to incorporate things I've read. So anybody drink their coffee black? More likely to be a psychopath. <laughs> <laughs> study shows, <laughs> study shows that. 
So it must be true. But then we also think critically about how we consume research and what, is, what conclusions we draw based on articles that are read. So how we connect the uh, ELO and assessment of student learning, um, they do self-evaluations throughout the semester. Um, they also, I, I allow them to fail. So I ask them to do article critiques. And I tell them, if you don't know the answer, say, I don't know. But aren't I going to get counted off? No. It's learning. And then at the end of the semester, when you do know all the answers, you realize what you've learned. And I think that's cool. I also give a ton of feedback. I tend to ask questions instead of make comments. Um, they have their creative activity. I do a lot of peer assessment. And then they have class presentations and a formal presentation at IRCA. So from last semester, um, the challenges that I had were instructing creative activity to students who don't feel like they're creative. So anybody willing to uh, identify that they don't feel super creative? Yeah, it's hard. It's hard to, to say, but there's different dimensions of creativity. I also ask students, what is creative? Like, how do you measure that? What is smart? How do you measure it? And then we can talk about fancy words like operationalization and validity. So I can sneak that in when they're thinking and reflecting on what they're doing. Um, there's also uh, like complex software like Photoshop. And I thought you could, I, I was told wrong. I thought you could learn it in like an hour. You cannot, <laughs> or I cannot. So telling students, you can just, you just go. There's labs, Photoshop, it's designed, it's all there. You can be creative. Eh. Doesn't really work. Um, painting, I started out thinking I was gonna have them paint. And then I was told that's really hard and messy. So colored pencils, and I've got some watercolors that we use. Um, so th that's a challenge, is figuring out how to implement the creati creativity component. And then a challenge is also to group work or not. Um, I don't love group work. And I, if I'm going to have group work, I like to provide class time for group work. I know that schedules are tough. And I want to recognize the limits of people's free time. Um, so that's a, that's a challenge and a question that I have. This semester, I'm going to try having them work in groups. And we'll see how that works. Anybody have any questions? What's the most challenging aspect of a research course for students? Um, for, from my experience, it is getting them to understand that A, it's important, and B, that they'll use it. Um, the honors college students, a lot of them think, well, I'm going to grad school, I'm going to do research. Emerging scholar students, I'm going to grad school, I'm going to do research. Com study students, out of the 18 I have, I think I have two that think they're going to grad school and that's the only reason they need to do research. Um, I teach some social work students, they don't understand that they're doing assessment and they're doing research and they think, oh, I've got to read an article. This is stupid. Or I'm never going to connect what I read in an article to my practice. So that's, that's the tough part is, is getting that link from this is good information and you're going to use it and I don't think I am. And I'm, up, I'm jumping around and excited and they think I'm crazy because I like talking about it. Yeah. I'm curious how you address the resources that are available to you while you're here and then like paywalls and things once, you, once you're in your rest of your life. Well, and that's a, that's a conversation of realize what you have now and take advantage of it because you may not always have it. And think about those who don't. You may through your job and you do right now have that access. How do you responsibly communicate what you know out, which is like the article study shows 
that all people who drink black coffee are psychopaths? Is that responsible reporting? And what's missing from, I could have had y'all do wall squats. That's another study shows, just coloring today. So that, that's more of how we address the accessibility and responsible communication of research.